I recently had a number of questions coming in regarding how to edit MIDI velocity information to make it more musical inside of Cubase. So let's go ahead and take a look at some quick tips and tricks. We can think of velocity as how hard a MIDI key from a keyboard or drum pad was pressed in the transmission of a MIDI note message. Velocity is actually value two of a MIDI note message where value one is pitch. So the, every MIDI note message will have a velocity. Now some people confuse velocity with main volume or continuous controller seven. So velocity will only be the initial attack of the note. And if you wanted the volume of the note to change during the transmission of that note, that's what MIDI CC7 main volume would do. So we could think of velocity, if it's a higher velocity that the note would be louder, the lower the velocity, the note would be softer as a rule of thumb. But it really depends on how the instrument itself is responding to velocity information. So when we look at velocity in Cubase, the values can range from zero to 127. Most of us think of these lines here, these vertical lines in the key editor when we think of velocity. But if we wanted to look at our velocity information directly in our list editor, we could see the velocity information here on the right hand side. Now, one of the default modes of the coloring within the MIDI key editor is that the coloring is based on velocity. So if I wanted to take a particular note here and adjust the velocity, we'll zoom in to make it a little more obvious. We can see that the louder the velocity, the higher the velocity, the redder that that note becomes. As I come here and I decrease that velocity, then mess, the note will become more blue in color. So that gives us a, a pretty good indication visually from the color what the velocity would be. And we can notice that as, like on this particular clavinet patch, as I adjust the velocity, the sound will change. So higher velocity, so you could hear kind of the different sounds of the notes based on velocity. Now when we want to edit velocity, it's very easy to just use the tool, which will be the default mode. And I could do an individual note, I could also just edit a range of notes. If I wanted to keep a series of notes, the same proportionality with velocity, I could select the range and from the info line, just come here and use my mouse scroll wheel to increment or decrement the velocities like so. I also have the ability to use various, my line tools. So if I wanted to just have those velocities decrease linearly, or if I wanted them to increase linearly, or even if I wanted to grab like a parabola to draw in changes visually like that, we could do that very easily using our various drawing tools and line tools. Now, a lot of people miss out the a really handy velocity function that's part of the MIDI modifiers from the inspector. So if you right click, we could actually see the MIDI modifiers indicated here. So if you don't see the MIDI modifiers, right click and place a check mark uh, just right there in the MIDI modifiers. So once I do that, I could now, let's say I play back this velocity. And if I wanted to shift the velocity, let's say I just wanted to subtract 20 values on playback. Or if I wanted to increase the velocity. Now I also have velocity compression. So let's say if I wanted to do uh, knock the velocity to one half, a third or a quarter. So you could just simply have your velocity compression right there. And we could also choose to randomize the velocity. So under the random section, you could choose different values so if you wanted to say we want our velocities to randomize between 39 and whatever other values. So you can just choose to have your velocities randomized as well. 
Now, velocity is really critical when dealing with drums. So if we wanted to play, look at a quick drum part, and a lot of times when you look at drum parts, um, you may notice that, you know, it could be hard when we see probably a kick and snare and hi-hat. If you wanted to adjust the kick velocity, that it could be tough. And this is where the Cubase drum editor comes in very handy because you could select the kick, snare, and hi-hat and see only the, only the velocities for the selected notes. So let's say if I wanted to play back a quick drum pattern here. Now, one of the things that you can do to really, you know, make sure that program drums don't sound programmed is really, especially on hi-hats, tweak the velocity. So very easily, if you wanted to come here and let's say I just want to take every other hi-hat and knock it down. So now when I play back the same pattern, and let me undo those changes. So now we play back, it's very machine-like. Versus this. Now, when dealing with different types of music or different instruments, like maybe we have a piano and we can see that this piano may have different instruments voiced, you know, like a chord playing. So again, kind of like dealing with our drums, how can we just edit the velocity of this note as opposed to this note when they're stacked on top of each other? One of the really handy things is if you hold down control shift on Windows or command plus shift on Mac and just hover over the note, you could adjust the individual note without affecting the velocity of the other note. So this is a very easy way. So again, that's command plus shift on Mac or control plus shift on Windows. Now, if I have all of the notes selected, I could also do some other handy velocity editing tips. So once the notes are selected, we'll get kind of these uh, editors that we kind of these, this editing technique, I, I call it like note expression editing. But here we could scale. So if I want to take this piano part, we'll listen to it first here. So let's say I just wanted to scale that to increase the overall volume to have it do kind of a crescendo, but keep the proportionality. I could also just come here and go to the center area and decrease or increase the proportionality like so. Or if I wanted to expand or compress the velocities, I could go to the right center edge. So that comes in very handy. Now, some other things we could do when we want to make parts a little more musical, we could do some great things with the logical editor as well. So let's say I want to start off and I want uh, all of the velocities to be starting from like a fixed value. So let's say we have something kind of interesting musically, but not dynamically. <laughs> So what I want to do now is to apply some different logical editing presets. So I'm, we'll show you how to make these. So I'm going to go to the, the MIDI menu to logical editor. And I want to start off and we're going to say type is equal to note. And I want to say value to, and I'm going to just put it inside a range of zero to 127. And what I want to do is in the action target, I'm going to choose value to the velocity and we're going to set random values between zero and 122. 
So now I'm going to, we'll select all these notes and now I'll just hit apply. And then we could just have those selected notes automatically be randomized. Now let's do something else uh, interesting where I wanted to take every other third note and adjust the velocity. So what I want to do is set this to last event and under, under filter target. And let's say every other event, and we'll say the event counter, and I'm gonna choose three. And at this point, I want the value to, to subtract a value of 44. So now every other third note will be go down in value by 40 by 44. So you could do very interesting stuff. So even if you want to take that and then tilt. So and if we want to look at this part directly inside of our score editor, I could just take and select all the notes here. And at this point, I could apply the same logical editor presets. So if I wanted to apply that there, I also have the ability of selecting the velocity directly here within the info line as well. Now, sometimes you may want to actually take a drum part that has kind of an interesting velocity pattern and save a pattern of the velocity. So let's say if I have uh, an interesting, like maybe like a train drum beat, something like this. But let's say my part uh, is actually sounding like this. And this is the same part just with different velocities. So if I wanted to, what I could do is I'm gonna open up my quantize uh, presets here. So we could come right here and we'll go to our quantize panel. And what I want to do is to just take this MIDI part here that I like the velocity pattern of, and we'll go ahead and just move this to the center. And I'm going to select velocity to 100%, position and length to 0%. And I could save this as a preset. So if I just wanted to save that, uh, or you could just kind of click directly there. So let's take our pattern here. And since this is my quantize preset, and we can think of it not just doing quant quantization, but now I could just say I wanted to select this part, hit Q for quantize. And instead of applying the position or length, it's now going to apply the velocity preset. So you can see that there's a number of great velocity editing tips and tricks that could really make your parts more musical. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.